Hey guys, what's up? Jonathan Price here coming at you for another week of um, Tech Thursdays. Uh, this week we are continuing our orchestration series. And this week we are looking at the brass. And so this is part three. If you missed part one and part two, part one just is an overview of woodwinds and their instruments, their ranges. And then part two is capabilities. And so um, this one may combine both, but I haven't decided yet. So we're just going to see what's happening. Um, a little bit of housekeeping um, for those of you who did not hear and did not see the post. Um, we are going to be doing a special um, interview and I forget the gentleman's name and but go back and find it. We are doing with the a interview with the producer of score a film composer documentary. And so that is going to be really fascinating. I'm really excited about that. So go back and look through that information and um, yeah, be uh, be on the lookout for that episode coming up here in the next couple of weeks. So, OK, we are going to dive into this really quickly. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at just the horn section or the brass section rather uh, from an orchestral standpoint. Now you're going to have other horns that you may uh, come in contact with like uh, a C trumpet. Uh, those are pretty common. Uh, piccolo trumpet, um, horn, different v variations of uh, keys of horns. Um, and so I'm going to try to talk a lot about the main ones with a few of the minor exceptions that you'll find in an orchestra. But for the most part, when you say horn or trumpet or trombone or tuba or euphonium, you're going to be talking about, you're going to be speaking a language that most everybody will understand and know. Um, so with that being said, let's dive in. So I'm going to play for you before we get into that craziness. I'm going to play for you a demonstration, a, a mock-up that I did of fanfare the for the Common Man uh, by Aaron Copeland. So enjoy, and I will see you in just a minute.
Cool. All right, there you go. So um, that the entire BRAC se section was created using uh, sample modelings, um, trumpet, trombones, uh, French horns, and tuba. And so if you guys can get those libraries, man, th I mean, they are absolutely fantastic. Now, I will tell you this. They take a lot of programming to make them sound like you want them to, unless you have a, um, a tech control uh, like I showed you guys last week, or if you have a breath controller. This is one of the few instruments that really, really benefits from having one of those breath controllers, not a tech control, sorry, a leap motion controller. Tech control is the breath controller. Um, and it, either one, you... I'll dive in, in in just a few minutes before after we get through the transposition and what and what each instrument is designed to do. Um, but having those MIDI um, MIDI uh, capabilities to manipulate each and every portion of any MIDI data available without having to go through each and every single menu is an absolute must if you want this library to perform. Um, uh, the way you want it to. Now, this is not an out of the box uh, type library that you're going to get with like Spitfire or orchestral tools or anything like that. This is purely as dry of a sound as you can get. It's recorded in an anechoic chamber, which is zero uh, reflections or very, very, very few, uh, if any at all. And so, what that does is it allows the characteristic of and, and the sound of each individual instrument, that's it. The, it's just the fundamental. You don't get any extra of the harmonics unless that instrument is naturally creating the harmonic itself. Um, so it's up to you to place it in a room to provide said harmonics. Then it gets into, well, how much, how much do you know about reverbs? And then that's a whole other area. So... This is not a library for the faint of heart, and you do have to buy the instruments um, individually. Let me show you here. Um, uh, sorry, guys. Pull this up for you. So samplemodeling.com. Here's their list of their products. Trombone, trombone, French horn, tuba, saxophones. A lot of you guys have probably heard about these. So um, this is an this is by far my favorite brass library. Um, I do have uh, Spitfire um, brass. I have um, uh, and orchestral tools brass. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but but these, uh, if you want that realistic sound, you want that realistic horn line, that punch, that um, true brassy nature. Uh, get these libraries and. But I'm telling you, they are not for the um, the beginning. I just want something out of the box player. You need to have some sort of a motion or um, expression controller via the leap motion controller or the tech control uh, breath controller. So uh, take a look at those. And okay, let's dive into this. So in a typical orchestration setup, you'll have... Um, Let's see. Oh, let me pull this up. Do, 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 do. This one. Virtual Soundstage. This is also a cool program. Virtual Soundstage. Um, you will typically have... Uh, I can make this bigger. Nope. Um, so I don't use this very often unless I'm doing concert score mock-ups. Um, this... You can get away with doing it for film, but... Um, I just use panning and reverb and that puts it in the space that I'm wanting. So I don't use this a whole lot other than for demonstration purposes. It's a great, fantastic program, but um, I don't use it nearly as often as I probably should. So anyway, so it, it's been battled back and forth as to where to put the brass instruments and, and how they kind of sit in the orchestra depending on the piece. I've I've seen... Uh, in the same concert, the horns would sit right over here, and in, the, in at intermission, they get up and they change, and they go over here, or they'll go to the middle, or they'll go. It it depends. I've seen them all over the place, but um, the place that I've seen them the most is on the left side, right over here. You'll have uh, where's my orchestra overlay? Uh, 
works for large. There we go. Okay, so let's just come back here. In the con in, this is typically where uh, the trombones or not trombones, French horns will be sitting. French horns are the um, what I consider the heavy lifters of the orchestra, and they are capable of doing. Um, basically anything that you need them to do from carrying the big soaring melodies to nice intimate textures to big beautiful choral sounds to um, crazy flourishes and flutter tonguing and roll um, rips and scales and short percussive features um, if you want to look at one of the coolest uh, horn uh, pieces look at Bernard, uh, Bernard Herman's uh, is it uh, vertigo and I want to say taxi driver. Um, I, I I think that's it. But um, about good grief, the horns are just insane in that in that um in that piece. Uh, Bird of Herman in, in in the score for taxi driver. I'll have to look that up. I might put something in the description. So, um, so typically the horns sit here. So again, like I said, they do. A lot of the big, nice, big sweeping lines that we talk about, they do percussive elements, they do um, effects, they can do some, they're capable of doing some really crazy cool effects. Um, like a lot of the brass instruments, the, the horns, they just sound ridiculous when they're doing effects and things like that. So that's something to keep in mind if you're writing for horns. Now, I'm going to pull up this little transposition sheet here, and let me make this bigger. Nice, big front and center. Okay. So, the one that we're going to be focusing on, and it's not on here. Why is it not on here? Is the horn in F. Uh, horn E, E flat, D. Fairly common. Okay, so those must be the rare ones. I didn't look at this fully when I downloaded it. So, um, okay, forget about this. Sorry, guys. Uh, the horn. The horn in F um, is is in the key of F. You'll have instruments that are pitched in a particular key. So, for instance, you'll have like the key of uh, F for horns. You'll have B flat, which has um, clarinet, trumpets and various other woodwinds i think um a lot of a lot of brass will be in b flat you have e flat a flat uh which are mainly for uh saxophones and different pitched brass um and then that's those are the basic ones so for the horn and f let's say you want to you the key of your overall piece is in the key of c well for um here's my french horn okay so let's say that you're writing something in the key of c okay and you have um your co your key in C for the piano is actually going to be in the key of F for the horn. So keep in mind that a C played on the piano is going to be a F sounding for the or sorry a G sounding for the horn. Okay, so their written pitch is going to sound an or er, a fifth lower. Okay, all right. So if I write for them a G, their sound is going to be a C on the piano okay all right moving on so that that's the basic of a french horn uh trumpets uh so trumpets work a lot in the same capacity and they are capable of doing a lot of those uh big majestic lines you'll hear them in a lot of marches you'll hear them uh carrying the melody a lot you'll have them doing a lot of um uh short staccato stuff and ornaments and doing some uh, accompaniments you'll have the occasional trumpet solo um, they're insanely loud um, especially if you get um, 
three or four of them playing the same note, uh, it's important to remember that if you're giving them all the same note and you're in an orchestra setting, that you write them either like a half dynamic or a full dynamic lower than the rest of uh, what you would have orchestrated. So if you want everybody playing a nice big forte and you give the trumpets a forte, they're going to stick out. So you want to preface there for the, you keep in mind that it, when the brass player sees anything above a forte, they get really excited because they can blow some crazy air through their horn. And, uh, yeah, you, you, they're a lot of fun to, to to play with. So keep that in mind. They will um, they will make you go deaf if you're not careful, and that's why they have a lot of um, shields up and stuff and recording. Like they'll so the trumpets usually sit right here in the front, and then trombones right here, and then tuba woodwinds are right here, percussions back here, violin one, violin two, viola cello or violas celli and bass back here um that's just the typical orchestral setup so the trumpets you'll have right across here sometimes if it's a trumpet feature piece they'll put the trumpets right here behind the woodwinds and they'll put the woodwinds kind of in a little section right here in the strings and they'll put the trumpets back here so i've, I've seen that done a couple of times so uh, it just depends on on, on what the sound is you're going for. There's no, there's no hard and fast rule for, uh, for that. So the trumpets, they are capable of doing like rips, uh, staccato, like I said, big, nice legato lines that will double in octave for the French horn. They will, um, a lot of time accompany flute, uh, uh, violins, and sometimes sometimes uh the viola if it's an inner voice they'll do a lot of the accompaniment and so that's that's something to keep in mind is is instrument groupings and taking the middle voices the upper and middle voices and putting them together so like um upper and uh mid-range uh woodwinds like uh lower flutes clarinets oboes uh, the clarinets up in the higher range, the oboes kind of in that mid to low range of their register, and then putting them with like instruments. So um, violas, second violins, upper um, upper registers of the cello, and then uh, registers in the uh, lower oboe, clarinet, and... Um, upper bassoon those all have really nice colors and textures and things that are complementary. so keep in mind some of those things when we're talking about orchestration so uh moving on so let me show you a couple of these trumpets so a trumpet you have here Now, I will tell you that uh, the one caveat to all of these um, instruments that, that is the hugest, the hugest, my goodness, the largest delineation between a real orchestra and a fake one or a virtual one is the fact that if I were to try to play that is right in the middle. This E is, is the height is is um uh the e in the staff um that space at the very top uh and this everything from here well i'll say from here to this c can be played at full tilt and yeah, they can also be played if you have a really good trumpet player who has a lot of control they can be played at um, a nice mezzo piano to a um to maybe a piano but asking a trumpet player to hold a G at a pianissimo dynamic is not possible anything above a G don't even ask him to try to play anything above a G at anything below a mezzo forte it's, it's just not going to sound right plus you don't want a brass playing way up there uh, the only one that can do it um, is the piccolo trumpet because it's designed for such a reason okay so when you're when you're performing brass lines keep in mind that 
you want to do your um, phrases appropriately. So like I talked about last week, blowing air um, either onto your hand or just blowing air out as you're playing a phrase. When you take a breath, take your hand off the keyboard or the, or the melody. Okay. So if I were to, um, and that, that's another thing that comes really handy with that breath controller by tech control is that once you're out of breath, the sound stops. You can't, unless you're pushing down on a key and you're blowing through the breath controller, no sound will come out. Okay. So that's one of the really nice things that makes it a very, very realistic way to play a trumpet. If you have no idea how to play a trumpet or any brass for that matter. So, so let's do a little bit more here. We have Okay, you can do nice rips. Um, nice short staccatos. That may not be totally realistic to be able to play on the trumpet, but it's nice to be able to um, to demonstrate. Trumpets also have this really beautiful, nice, low, rich range um, that can that can kind of get a little um, wobbly if if you start to push the dynamic. So, like for instance, if I keep this C nice and low, it kind of gets a little. Um, a little too brash, uh, so I, I try to avoid keep um, throwing really large and heavy dynamics into the lower portion of the trumpet range. So uh, that's just something for you guys to keep in mind. You don't have to do it. It's just something that I I prefer. You're going to lose the trumpets in a larger orchestration if they're down that low anyway, and so you the only way to get them to cut through is to either have them as solo or duet or uh, trio instrument with um, was something kind of articulating and kind of helping them out like, um, vibes, not vibes, uh, marimba, uh, lower, uh, woodwinds and violas and cellos. So doing things like that. Okay. Move on really quickly, uh, to tr uh, back up between the trumpets, the, the, um, the transposition. So if I'm playing, if I, again, if I'm in the key of C, the trumpet is going to be written in the key of D. So if I have a piece that's that's in C and I need to know, okay, so if I want the trumpet to play a sounding C, I would have to write a D. Okay, so on the piano, that's going to sound as a D, or a C, sorry. Okay, so some of these transpositions can get a little, um, can get kind of confusing. So the best thing to do is to get into Finale or Sibelius or something like that and write out a scale in C, and then go into the transpose function or the um, there's a view in the document view. I think that you say uh, change to concert pitch or change to actual pitch, I think. And it'll change between um, the pitches. So you can see in the key of C, the trumpet is playing in the key of D and do that for like the horns, um, any transposing woodwinds you may have or any transposing... Um, uh, any other weird uh, like saxophones, uh, things like that. So keep that in mind. It's a great tool uh, to use for that. Uh, okay, let's see. Sorry, mouth's getting dry. All right, moving on. So the next thing that you want uh, to see or you want to uh, take a look at is the trombones, bass trombone, and tuba. Now, these are non-transposing instruments. So what that means is whatever you write for them is what's going to sound on the piano. The tuba uh, will sound an octave lower, uh, just like the uh, bass in the strings, which is cool. And you get this nice, warm, rich tones. Trombones uh, will sit right here, 
right in the back right here you'll have either three trombones with the third trombone being a like a bass trombone or a valve trombone or something of that nature just to give it a little bit more rich warm sound the trombones have a huge range from uh actually i don't remember what the lowest note is but they can go up into i think like the e f6 uh no f E F five, I think range. If you have one of those really, really crazy players, um, trumpet ranges are typically from this low G, this G three down here, all the way up to C six is pretty common for them. And then if you have a, a specialty player who can get up like uh, Miles Davis, Wynton Marsalis, Dizzy Gillespie, people like that, who um, once they get up to here, they just have a whole nother either octave, octave and a half sometimes. It's just ridiculous. Um, so don't be afraid to write some of those higher parts for those brass players. They, they, they love that stuff. They always are challenging each other to see who can go the highest and who can go the lowest. It's just a big competition for them and who can go louder and higher. And it's They're awesome. Uh, okay, trombones. So the trombones, uh, they that that was their range. Uh, they typically do a lot of the uh, internal work. So the the chords, the rhythms, the harmonies, and stuff like that. You will sometimes you'll find them taking the melody. They'll be in octaves. So you'll have like trumpets. Uh, you'll have trumpets uh, um, here. Trombones here. French horns will be written here uh, and sounding here in this range. Uh, and then you'll have tuba down here. Okay, so you have this general three octave general range for melodic writing. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, again, that third trombone player may double as a bass trombone player, depending on the piece. So uh, the bass trombone has an extended... Um, uh, an extension range that can go down into kind of the tuba realm and it has a nice big low brash um, more piercing type sound that will allow when it's combined with the tuba it'll allow it to cut through the orchestra so you have a nice point and then you have the tuba coming back right behind it with a nice warm um, I guess woolly nature it's, it's really nice so um, Let's see in here what I want to show you. So let's let's take a listen to some trombone part. And so I'm just gonna uh, highlight this. I'll take this out. Do, do, do. <laughs> They can get really, really brassy and tight, and it's that that's awesome. They can also do a lot of slides and stuff, and so it, if you can, they can. They're surprisingly some of the more athletic um, instruments in the orchestra. You wouldn't think that a trombone could be super athletic, but um, look at some of William's stuff and their arms. It looks like they're going to punch themselves in the face, and I'm sure it's happened once or twice. So take a look. The trombone also has what they can call an F attachment. So if you have a horn player and that you want doubled, you can ask the trombone player to uh, use their F attachment and play that horn part, and um, which is which is pretty cool. You have also um, in the in the French horn, they have a, what's called an F valve. And that F valve allows them to switch between uh, the um, the key of F and the key of B flat, so that it's a dual key uh, instrument. And so, if like one time I was when I was teaching, we had one of our trumpet players who was sick and could not play their solo line. And none of the other, they, they were junior hires. And so and the other junior hires hadn't practiced and they don't know the the um, 
they didn't know the part. And so what I did was I grabbed the French horn and I just played the trumpet solo on the French horn and just used that F elf and it had the same fingerings and stuff like that. So everything worked out. So that was kind of neat. Um, it was a lot of fun to play French horn in a concert that I had never, ever played the French horn before. And so that was, that was quite interesting. So I had to learn pretty quickly. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Some of these transposing instruments are pretty great. So the F attachment on the trombone is, is awesome. Uh, the trombones are pitched in the key of C naturally, so you don't have to worry about transposing them. Just like the bass trombone and the tuba, they're all concert pitch, which is fantastic. Um, bass trombone, here's a little bit of what the bass trombone does. And they are more, uh, again, a little more punchy, a little more pointed. <laughs> So a little bit of that, okay? And then the tuba can be, uh, if, if they're pushed, they can have a little bit of a point to them. So like when I mean a point, I mean they can uh, get that really nice brassy sound, that, that punch, that bite that will cut through an orchestra, but that's not their strong suit. Things like the bass trombone, the chimbasso, um, a sack butt, which is kind of like a... a primitive trombone, if you will, those have these really um, biting and piercing um, sounds that, that come out. Uh, so here's the, here's the tuba. Okay. So you, it's nice and warm and it fills out a lot of that. Um, I guess if you were looking on a, on a plane, it would be um, this nice horizontal plane, and then you have and filling in kind of in a rounded bubble shape, and then you also have the trombones being like the top of that, and it kind of more pointed in 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 that realm, and then you have the French horns, which are kind of that middle type glue that carry the melody and some of the harmony and things like that. They are treated more as a four part. Uh, harmony and a choir so you'll have the first horn so if you look uh, let me pull this back up so if you look here you'll have the first horn here second third fourth sometimes you'll have up to six if you're Hans Zimmer you'll have a hundred um, if if you have so you'll have the first horn here the second horn will play the tenor line if you're looking in a SATB format the third horn will typically pay play the alto line and the fourth will play the um the base the base part uh in the in a satb format and the reason that they do that is so that you have a nice big wide sound for the parts so you have um almost two stereo in images coming at you with harmony so that that's just one of the sonic implications uh that you can get from giving different parts to different um bodies which is it it, it works out really well uh in a sonic landscape okay all right um so i think uh, i'm gonna leave you there yeah i'm gonna leave you there because next week i'm gonna talk about some of the um well, let me do this. Let me show you some of these other instruments and what they sound like. Uh, so the cornet is a trumpet brother, a trumpet cousin, if you will. And the cornet is really designed for those uh, mellow uh, moments along with... So the flugelhorn and cornet. Uh, the cornet you'll find in a lot of marching bands. Uh, flugelhorn you'll find in a lot of marching bands. Um, and you won't find them... You'll find them a lot in jazz um, you'll also find like mellophone, um, things like that, that are kind of trumpet and, and euphonium kind of related, but, um, each having a darker sound, the lower you get. So here's a cornet. It's, um, well, here, here's a cornet. So that's the range down to the E. And then they can go up into the trumpet range easy. Okay, pretty easy. So it's you can tell that it's it's a little bit more pointed 
uh, I guess, than a trumpet. A trumpet has a nice, big, warm, it can have a nice, warm sound. And that's also going to depend on the depend on the player and, and how they shape their lips and their embouchure and how things are um, coming out. The flugelhorn is, it, it is like a buttery, milky, maybe like a potato, like a mashed potato-like sound. Um, I don't know why I'm using all these food analogies. Um has a lot of that sound like a trombone would but it's it, it's in a trumpet format trumpet style so um so you can hear some of that trombone quality along with the trumpet quality and it's a nice um melding of the two now the german trumpet uh which is one of the instruments that you get in the sample modeling pack is a super piercing, um, very loud, like marching style trumpet. Okay, so you you can kind of tell that that's a, that's a pretty piercing. Uh, instrument so you can use if somebody has a German trumpet that's fantastic um, if not that you don't need to write anything necessarily for the German trumpet specifically the piccolo trumpet the piccolo trumpet however is something that you would want to write for very specifically the first trumpet player is going to be the one who will most likely have a piccolo trumpet with them they'll typically have either a C trumpet or a um, uh, a piccolo trumpet, they'll have a B flat. They might even have a D trumpet. So th it just depends on on what uh, instrument they have your first place. So uh, beware when you're writing parts to specify for B flat trumpet, for C trumpet, for um, I guess E flat or D uh, or piccolo. And you're going to have to delineate um, what exactly those the, those trumpets you want uh, in there. Okay. The, with horns, you don't really have to specify. You just say horn and F, and that's obviously, you know, horn and F. Uh, clarinets, they're just going to be in B flat unless you have a transposing, uh, like E flat clarinet or the um, uh, English horn, which I think is an A flat. A flat or E flat? I don't remember off the top of my head, sorry. Um, but the piccolo trumpet uh, is designed to play those really nice high lines at a quieter volume. So Bach used this a lot. He was the one who he, uh, the one that comes to mind when I when I think of nice big, um, not big, high uh, piccolo trumpet parts. Now, they are absolutely capable of playing a nice mezzo piano, piano, um, anything below about a B because their range goes, it's not very, it, it's, that, I mean, that's the, that's probably the lowest that you're going to be able to get out and it's not going to sound very good. So you want to keep it up here and you're going to want to double that with flutes with uh, strings, things like that, because that is a pure, you have one instrument, and that single instrument can outplay an entire orchestra at full tilt. Uh, it's crazy how much piercing power that thing has. So be very, very careful when you are writing for uh, trumpet. Um, trumpet and brass, I'm not going to go through all the brass um, effects that they can do, but I will go through some of their basic ones. So um, trumpets can do things like rips, stabs, um, they can do bending chords. They can do um, uh, obviously scales and runs and things like that. So uh, some of the rips, stabs, clusters, they're pretty common. Um, 
where you have rips up, rips down. You have um, uh, when you th- they have the, there are so many techniques. Good grief, um, PDQ Bach. <laughs> if you guys haven't listened to any PDQ Bach, just YouTube or Google PDQ Bach brass, and uh, tons of stuff will come up, and they will do he. He will use the instrument in ways you never even thought were possible for brass. He'll have you like banging on the mouthpiece and like flicking the bell and like humming through your instrument. And I think there's a Christmas one that he does or that I heard at a holiday concert that was um, they played the entire thing with their mouthpieces like halfway out of the horn. So it kind of created this more buzzy um, mellow sound, which was really funny. And they were just doing all sorts of weird articulations and stuff like that. So um, uh, you build clusters and stuff. They're really good at that. Another thing that trumpets are really good at is those super fast staccato phrases. Williams uses these a lot. That kind of stuff The trumpets are absolutely fantastic at. They got these crazy tongues. And that's another thing that brass players will have um, incredible tonguing um, abilities. They can do quad tongue, triple tongue, double tongue, and so like a double tongue, da 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 da, or triple tongue, da 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 da, da or quad tongue, da 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 da. da, da, da. They're super fast, and so and they're they can make things sound really really good in a really fast manner, get nice short fat notes. So that's pretty great. Horns do the same thing, and they can do these rips. They can do falls. They can do scales. They can do um, all sorts of things. One of the other cool things that I use a lot is they have this um, uh, technique called the Doppler, and what it is is let me select it here. Okay, so the Doppler. We can hear that. Turn that up a little bit. Sorry. Okay, they could. You can also do it up. You can do it down. You can do swells. Obviously, um, long short runs, long short rips. Um, yeah, they're 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 great for a whole lot of stuff. So. Those are just some of the techniques and things you can get away with. Trombones are known are for their slides. Um, I don't have any really good like trombone slides per se, so I ha- I don't get to use them a whole lot. But if you want to write them, you just write slide, and you'd write like a like a little circle uh, for your note. Obviously, circle. Jeez, it's been a long day. A just a note head, and then a little squiggly line that goes up to here and they know that's a slide or you can do like a it looks like so you have the circle here and then it goes whoop like that and so that's pulling up the slide uh let's see i think that's all i'm going to cover for today so that's just a basic overview in the intro to brass instruments and what they sound like what they can do so um if you would like the midi information from this leave a comment in the section below and I will uh, send that to you and I can put a post either I'll attach it to Facebook and um, do that for you and you guys can mess with your own brass library so this is again this is Aaron Copeland's fan for fanfare for the common man and um, timpani bass drum tam tam things like that so, um, yeah so anyway uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will um, get back with you next week. And next week I will go over some of the brass uh, MIDI data that um, th- th- that is absolutely critical to get that nice, realistic brass sound. Okay. All right. So next week I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week. Peace out.